Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we show you one cool thing which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Segan, this is Jim Fisher, and today we have a point and shoot camera. So this we is do. like this is like a little inexpensive camera for basic beginners, right? No, this is a, this is a premium uh, point and shoot camera for the folks who have everything. Premium point and shoot camera. Most so, point and shoots are premium now. That's a uh, thing. Because the smartphones have decimated the low end of the market. Uh -huh. So to get a point and shoot that is going to separate itself from your smartphone, you're starting to look at cameras around the $400 to $500 price range. Okay. This one exceeds that. Okay. Uh, this is a $1,200 uh, camera. A $1,200 <laughs> point and shoot camera. $1,200 pocket friendly camera with a one inch sensor size, which Sony has been really pushing for more than five years now. It's 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 kind of it released the first RX100. This is the RX100 VI, the six mm -hmm. supposedly. Although they just upgraded the electronics of the five and renamed the VA. So A is not a Roman numeral that I know <laughs> of. Uh, so that's that's something to talk about another time is naming property naming naming uh, decisions. Uh, but yeah, it's got a long zoom lens with a one inch sensor. It is a 24 to 200 millimeter equivalent in full frame terms with mm -hmm. an f2.8 to 4.5 variable aperture. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's plenty of zoom reach. You've got a really nice OLED EVF that pops up mm -hmm. with one motion and you just bring it to your eye. The older ones, had to, you had to pull this out mm -hmm. a little bit, but they fixed that. You can also push it down with one motion. You have a pop-up flash? Yeah, you do. Okay. No hot shoe, but that's fine because you're a point probably not going to put a big a flash on this that's twice as big as the uh, camera. Uh, uh, uh. Although it would be nice to have a hot shoe uh, for studio work if you had strobes, mm -hmm. but if you're using a studio strobes, you're probably not going to use this camera. You're going to use your full frame SLR and mirrorless camera, which is what someone who buys this probably already has. Now let's talk. Let's let's talk about that sensor and the image quality. Because if I walk into Best Buy, I'm going to see a rack of these like slightly desultory, inexpensive, you know, Canon Elf point and shoots, you know, out by the cell phones. Um, what is the difference between the sensor on those inexpensive point and shoots? and the sensor in a $1,200 point shoot. There are a few differences. The major difference is size. This is about four times the surface area of that little elf, or your Samsung Note 9. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the nine? Is the new one? The Note 9 is the new okay. one. Yeah, this is four times the sensor of the main camera in those. Uh, and this sensor is also stacked, which means it puts the DRAM on the chip, which means it can do all these crazy fast readouts. Uh, so you can shoot 24 frames per second in RAW format. Oh, so that's uh, not even video. It's 24 still frames. 24 raw still frames. Okay. So you could make you could make silent raw movies. You know, mm -hmm. if you really wanted to, for you know shorter durations of time, because your buffer is going to uh, top out, and we have the numbers exactly where the buffer tops okay. out in the review. I have to. I could. I could just hold the button down here. Nice. You get. Uh, we're in JPEG mode now, and you get like more than 600 JPEGs in a burst, <laughs> or something crazy like that. Uh -huh. uh, it's and but then it does take. After you take a long burst like that, it's going to be telling you here at the top of the screen. We'll flip it over it here. It tells you that it's writing. That it's writing. It's giving uh, a little motion like and a countdown timer. So we're at 41, 40. Uh, the pro one of the things about Sony cameras is while it's writing to the card, mm -hmm. you can keep taking images, but you can't start a video. Interesting. So you got to you got you know use your your high speed capture wisely. And honestly, 24 is an overkill for 99% of the things you'll be shooting. The medium setting is 10 frames a second, mm -hmm. and that is more than adequate. So now, in terms of video, yeah, what, what kind of video does it record? Could you recommend this as a video camera? High bit rate 4K. Uh, it does not have an in-lens neutral density filter, which some of the previous ones in the, in the, uh, in the series did. So that mm -hmm. will help make it a little more difficult to keep your shutter angles right when you're shooting, uh, getting that 1 over 50 frame, even at the ISO 125 base setting this has. Uh, it does have some low extended ISOs to help you out there, but there's no way to add an external neutral density filter to the lens. So that's something to be concerned about for video. Now, now, uh, once again, like so, you uh, so this is not a beginner's point and shoot camera, and I think part of the issue there also is the UI. So can you show the viewers some of this UI and explain why uh, it's 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 not necessarily a beginner's UI? Sure. Uh, you know, it's it, there's there's tons of stuff on here. I hit the FN button, I get a bank of 12 settings to adjust, and I can do 
the autofocus mode, Sony's AFA automatically switches between tracking and uh, intel single focus based mm -hmm. on the scene, scene it recognizes. And it, it does a really good job knowing when to refocus, when you know and keep focus. But if you wanted to knock it to AFS or AFC, or even manual focus, you could. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's one thing. And then the, when you go to the, to the actual deep menu, you've got pages and pages of settings here. Uh, so wow. Just scroll through. Sorry, that's just the top level. Let me go down to the bottom level. So I got 12 pages in the first section. I've got 10 in the second, two in the third. I assume you three. can set up some custom modes. There is a My Menu. Okay. Uh, what, I, what I really recommend to someone buying this camera is to sit down for about an hour and get all the settings customized and the things mm -hmm. you're going to think you're going to change frequently, like card format and other you know, video. If you want to change like, your slow motion modes, it has the uh, high frame rate up to 960 mm -hmm. frames per second slow motion that you get with the stack sensor. That can, you can add to My Menu. Uh, so go through, figure out what you're going to use frequently and put them in My Menu because it'll save you a lot of paging through and searching for things when you're out wanting just to make images. Now, 24 frame per second raw burst, 960 frame per second slow-mo. How fast a memory card do you recommend for this thing? Uh, this has got, this does not have UHS-2, this is just a UHS slot. Okay. So you're fine with a 95 megabyte per second card that'll pretty much top out what you can do. Mm -hmm. I usually, I have some 300 megabyte per second cards that I use to test cameras and that's what I used with it, but I didn't net any speed advantages over the 95. Over a 95, yeah. okay, okay. You do want to use an SDXC card, because mm -hmm. uh, if you don't, you're going to not have all of the video capabilities unlocked. Mm -hmm. Some of the things, the high frame rate and some of the 4K high bit rate options will only work with the fast with the SDXC. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, uh, what kinds of what kinds of frame rates? What are your frame rate options in terms of video? Because I know our video guys are very picky about that sort of stuff. 4K, you get 24 and 30. Okay. Uh, 1080p, I believe it's up to uh, 120. Okay. And then you have the extended slow motion above that of the. 240, 480, or 960 using mm -hmm. the HFR mode, which is available on the, which is accessible via the mode dial up top. So now this is the RX 106. When was there was was the RX was there an RX 105? Yes. Okay. The three, four, and five have okay. a different lens, and okay. they are all still in the market except for the three, four, and VA are now all still the current models with the 24 to 70 f1.8 to 2.8 lens, mm -hmm. which is a very short zoom, but it's really yeah. good for low light. Okay. Uh, this has got the longer zoom, the 24 to 200, f2.8 to 4.5, mm. so you're ca capturing a little bit less than half. But you can't half, go all the way down to 1.8. Right, you're capturing a little bit less than half the light wide open uh, mm -hmm. or wide angle, and uh, 2.8 to 4.5 is a little bit less than half the light zoomed all the way in. So you're losing about 50% of the light gathering capability, a little bit more, maybe 60% compared with but you get more zoom. Three, four, and five, but you get more zoom. Yeah. Let's start taking some questions. Can you access pictures remotely and transfer to PCs uh, without wires? Sure. It's got Wi-Fi. Uh, transfer to PCs. I don't know if Sony can do that. Uh, you can transfer to your smartphone without wires. Mm-hmm. Because uh, it, it uses an app. It's not a PC connection. So you're going to be transferring to your smartphone or tablet, Android or iOS device. Uh, if you're using a computer, your best option is to take the card out and use a card reader. I remember, I actually remember, uh, time was, and this was a while ago, I, if there were certain cameras, I forget whether they were Samsung's or Sony's, that ran like their own FTP server on the camera. Do you yeah, remember that? Yeah, no, you, a lot of Pro SLRs still do that. You okay, can, uh, okay. If you have an Icon D5, it's got an Ethernet port on the side, same mm -hmm. as the Canon EOS 1DX Mark II, and I believe the Sony A9 all have Ethernet jacks on them to plug in. Uh, and you can also get Wi-Fi grips mm -hmm. for some of the Nikons to, with FTP capability. Okay, let's take some more questions. Does it have the same picture profiles available in other Sony cameras? Uh, yes, I need to look through and see what all of them are. It may have some extra ones, but it has the flat, the flat log picture profiles if that's what you're asking about, which is probably why you're asking that question mm -hmm. for video. So now, uh, do, you, do you consider this a Who's buying this? Do you consider this a secondary camera for people who already have a larger, more expensive camera, or is this for somebody who um, you know wants to wants to improve from their smartphone but doesn't necessarily want to carry something big and heavy? It's a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, it certainly appeals to photographers who want to go on vacation and they don't want to take their full kit. Is it waterproof? And, no. Okay. It's not waterproof. It's okay. not weather sealed. Uh, if you want something like this that is weather sealed, Sony will have you covered as well <laughs> uh, with a larger bridge style camera, the RX10 series. Okay. Now the RX10, the original RX10 and the RX102, both still on sale, 
have a 24 to 200 millimeter fixed F2.8 lens with mm -hmm. a better macro capability, but they're a lot bigger. They are weather sealed. They've got that in lens neutral, in, and they've got mm -hmm. the in lens neutral density filter. Mm -hmm. The three and the four models drop the ND filter due to more complex lens designs. Still have the weather sealing are both priced over thousand mm -hmm. dollars, but have 24 to 600 millimeter equivalent. Whoa! F2.4 to four lenses. So that's so, for like getting the dolphin breaching in the distance. That's a great camera to take with you if you're going on safari, mm -hmm. if you're going on a vacation where you're doing some wildlife photography yeah. or just want an all-in-one zoom. And it's a, those are about the size of an SLR. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the three and the four models, if you want more zoom, they're bigger, they won't fit in your pocket, but they're priced comparably to this and they're great cameras. Another question. How long does it last when taking photos versus video? Battery. Uh, battery life. I'd have to look up uh, the SEPA rating in the review. I'll tell you what, uh, I want to say it's around 250 shots, but mm -hmm. I, I can confirm that in the review. The thing about battery life and SEPA ratings, it's a standard uh, done by CIPA, which I am blanking on the acronym, but it's a, a, an imaging standards association in Japan. And they have mm -hmm. a standard test, which they use, and every camera coming out has a SEPA rating. SEPA ratings are fairly accurate if you're taking individual images and reviewing things in between and doing a few other things. If you're shooting at 24 frames a second, you're gonna get a lot more than 200 shots. You'll fill up your memory card before your battery runs out. Okay, okay. Any more questions out there? Can it take pictures of the Aurora Borealis? Sure, why not? Uh, Do you need a special filter for that? No, you don't. You just have oh, to set okay. the manual. You just, it's got a full manual, aperture, ISO. Uh, uh -huh. And shutter speed control, so you would just, uh, that's something you would not trust auto exposure for, I don't think. I think for night sky photography, you usually dial it what's, in manually. What's your, what's your uh, range of available ISOs and shutter speeds here? 125 base with, I think, down to 50 is a low extended option. Uh, you lose some dynamic range when you use the lower extended options, so I usually just shoot at 125. Mm -hmm. uh, up through 12,800. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is about, which is probably a little further than you want to push the one inch sensor. 6400 is mm -hmm. the more reasonable top end I would use. Uh, and shutter speeds, uh, uh, I don't know what the long end was, if it's like a 30 second, uh, mm -hmm. or if, if I can check, yeah. but I believe it's up to, uh, let's see. Okay, so in camera, 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, and we're going to zoom all the way up to here. Whoa! 32,000. You're using the electronic shutter when you get that fast. 32,000th uh, 32, of a second. Yeah. Yes. Using the electronic shutter, silent shooting, when you're shooting that fast. I believe the mechanical is going to be more like uh, 1 or 4,000. Nope, that's okay. electronic. Wow. I'll have to look that up. But yeah, practically 1 over 30. You can you can shoot in very, very, very bright light. You can shoot in very, very long exposure. So so what are our editor's choices for point-and-shoot cameras right now? Well, we've given this one one. Okay. Uh, the Sony RX 103 with a shorter zoom version has stayed as our editor's choice, even though the 4 and 5 are offer more stuff. Mm -hmm. The 3 is still that kind of price point where the features and the... What's and its the, price point? Uh, it's selling for around 750 Ah, so 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 ultimate quality here is twelve hundred. If you have seven fifty, the three gets right. you a lot of similar. The VA is the VA. If you want all the features this has, all the twenty four frames per second, uh, everything else, and the fast, the shorter zoom with a with a brighter aperture, that's a thousand. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit the two hundred dollars less. You know, we have an average choice of one hundred and fifty dollars. The Canon Elf one ninety IS, which I only recommend to people who don't have a flagship smartphone. Uh, but if you're that type of person, that's you know your budget point and shoot. We have the Olympus TG5, which mm -hmm. is our editor's choice for rugged compact cameras. That's around 400. That's drop proof, shock proof, yeah. waterproof, everything proof. I have to say, with the with the little uh, with the little Elf, I've been getting interest in that kind of thing from people who are uh, trying to detach themselves from their smartphones. You got for your wife, right? Yeah. She got she got the G9X Mark II. Yeah. Okay, that's a $400 camera from Canon. It's an f2 to 4.9 lens. With the same mm -hmm. sensor size, it doesn't have the crazy fast, you know, uh, stack design. Mm -hmm. But as a backlit CMOS, so you're going to get very similar image quality with a shorter zoom lens. And she's not got as that, many crazy features, but a more affordable price. And she's got that specifically because sometimes she wants to leave the smartphone behind yeah. and not be tethered to all of these notifications yeah. and see the world and sometimes take pictures of the world. Yeah, yeah when we're talking, yeah. we're talking one-inch cameras. Sony 
typically puts the best fit and finish on its cameras. It's got the nicest DVF. It's got the best build quality. Mm -hmm. Canon has a couple models I like for consumers at low, lower price points. The G7X Mark II is the step up from the G9. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have an EVF, but it's got a slightly longer mm -hmm. lens, a 24 to 100, f1.8 mm -hmm. to 2.8. So you get a little bit longer lens than the 3.4 VA versions of the Sony, not as long as this, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, for less money. Uh, and then Canon's also got the G5X, which is kind of the G7X with an EVF. Okay. And there's also the G1X Mark III, which is an APS-C, like an SLR size mm -hmm. sensor with a 3X zoom lens. Uh, but we didn't like that one as much as, as the smaller sensor ones because of the narrow aperture. Any more questions out there? Okay, great. So this is the Sony uh, RX100 VI. Whether or not that is six, we aren't entirely sure it anymore. Used, it used to definitely be six. Now now with the VA, I don't know. It could just be VI. The VI. Yes. The, the VI and the VI. In any case, in any case, the Sony RX100 uh, VI is an editor's choice at $1,200 for a high-end point-and-shoot camera, uh, especially if you are looking for uh, high frame rate shooting. Uh, it is absolutely excellent at that. Thank you very much for watching. This has been one cool thing from PCMag.com. If you are watching us live on Facebook, we come back at 10 a.m. Eastern every day with another cool thing in another category. If you are watching us on Facebook, I mean on YouTube, then please like and subscribe our wonderful unedited single shot show where you can watch me uh, flub things constantly. Uh, but yes, please like and subscribe. We have a new one cool thing for you every day. Thanks a lot.